Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. Now in the previous episode I noted that I wanted to start uh, building the infrastructure for interplanetary flights and get something underway, but I've decided to modify that a little bit. Instead of just putting a satellite in orbit around Earth in order to communicate with interplanetary uh, missions, I want to put a station. And so I want to start building up my first uh, Earth orbit station in this series and I've also installed mission controller uh, I'm not gonna enable the plugin and uh, go by the limitations and take missions because I'm pretty good at coming up with missions on my own but I do want to see the launch costs of my vehicles just as reference point and especially since point two four will eventually have launch costs I want to see what we could do to minimize those so Mission Controller added a few things that I, I, I'm not going to be using, an orbital research box. This is mostly for research purposes, but again, I'm not going to be doing anything. Uh, so these would be used in the context of the missions. Now, if I'm going to make a space station, what I really need is docking ports. And we've got really small ones, the juniors. We've got the standard 1 meter and 1.25 meter ones. But it looks like I will need to spend money on, uh, not money, uh, science, on getting the Clampatron Senior. And we have enough science, so I think this will be a good investment going forward, especially since these docking ports could supplement uh, manned missions, for instance, to the moon, and allow, you know, um, orbital rendezvous missions and stuff like that. So let's pick these up, and then we'll have something to work with. So here you see uh, Mission Controller's ship value and current budget and I'm going to uh, get settings and I'm also going to have a ship value breakdown here and under settings I'm going to disable the plugin as you see. Okay everything else is normal. I should note that the Mission Controller settings file I'm using a modified settings file by Nathan Kell and that modifies I think mainly the fuels, the fuel prices but uh, might have modified other things and so it, it won't uh, operate exactly like the stock mission controller extended but uh, that mission control controller extended is also largely for um, what you got uh, stock missions I mean that's obviously all mods have to start on the basis of being configured for stock rather than real solar system except for the realism overhaul mods themselves now we've got a little bit of an issue where our launcher let's let's get the Forseti out so here's the Forseti and it's actually the refueler on top and so first of all we've got a bit of an issue where this isn't really configured properly at all if we were going to send a station up and actually we don't have the research research module do we we still have to unlock that we haven't done that yet um, I hope it's in the tech tree somewhere, but uh, so we, we don't have that. Do we have the hitchhiker can? Not really. So we're not going to send the manned bits of this mission up yet. We're going to send the unmanned bits and work from there. And that's fair enough, but the problem is eventually when we get the research module, the, I forget the science lab or whatever it's called, uh, that will be too big for this launcher. Now, uh, Nathan Kale did provide a fix for the procedural fairings, so I think I can extend them past there. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, actually, let me try and load up the Forseti that wasn't uh, scrunched down and see if that loads up fine. Okay, here we go. There's the Forseti 3, and, well, it doesn't load up fine, but I think we can uh, extend these to the right size and it'll be alright. So, no huge problem. Alright, now this this was the Vern, and you know, we tried to land this on the moon and everything. But that's not what we're doing here. So let us let's get rid of these things which will eventually cause a disaster anyway. Cause now we've got the aerodynamic failures on. And see now I think uh, we don't really need the fins do we I think we can go with uh, three degrees on the gimbling on this one 
and I think the fins should be dumpable. Let me make sure I have gimbling proper on all these. So the right size. Then I'm going to save this as 473 subassembly. Oh, uh, it's got the nose cone thing. Okay, so let's not save all of that. Let's just save this part. Okay. And now the rest of it can go. Let's just uh, start new. Alright, so we don't have the big controller that would allow us to eventually have a manned station that can control remote remote missions. But we'll, we'll just start with uh, aiming for having a big... Ooh. You know, this would be a very interesting payload. I haven't even tried to see how this works. But uh, it, oh, we might add it to the station later. How about that? But let's not do that as the first module. So what we need is, I guess we'll have to start with something like this. Uh, the Mark 1 was more efficient, or I think the QBE is actually the most efficient one for now. So the main thing is communications, and so we need to pick a dish. We've got all the dishes uh, re-tuned to their correct size. I think we'll need at least two, and I'm doing this first because we need to then find out the uh, energy requirements afterwards. Let's go with two of these. I, I know it's looking weird right now, but don't worry. Um, actually, we can fix that pretty quickly, can't we now? Uh, is it one meter? One meter seems to get in the way of things, but maybe maybe that's what we should do. We should... Right, that looks decent. Okay, and then when they extend, they look like that. Okay. We're pretty much going to try and get as much up as possible on the Forsetti, including supplies. So we will have these canisters because eventually we got to build a station around this. But let's do one thing at a time. Uh, I still want more antennae. So these two can communicate up to and including the moon. Uh, I just need one for, well, I, I, I wouldn't say just one. Oh, uh, no, the, the, these are better. Uh, I, the, these reflectrons, well, this doesn't say activate by default, so I still want one of these, just in case. Oh, actually, you know, instead of this one, I don't like the look of that at all. Let's, uh, right, let, let me have just one of these and one of these. That's good. Now I want some of those canisters. Serious life support here. Um, let's have something to extend things a little bit. Perhaps Just a standard fuel tank? Wow, that's huge. And that also gets in the way of the antennae that I have there. MacJeb's already in, so that's not a problem. Oh, I guess a small reaction wheel will do. That's not one of those overpowered ones. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. That'll give us some space at least. And then the life support life support container and let's let's have uh, serious functionality here I don't think the outline cell works that would be helpful though wow how big is the carbon extractor large wow that's impressive and let's send the water purifier up too how much life support do we have with this? 80 days, that's not that much. Let's slap another one on. This isn't looking quite right here. 
Hmm. Well, let's 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 keep working on this. What this will allow me to do is slap some lights on in very good location. And let's give it a pleasant blue color actually. Yeah. Okay, now main dishes. So for long range communication. What's the most powerful one we have? That's basically all we need to think about. Uh, 300, 600, 600 going once. No, 1,000, 1,000. Got 1,000. 40. Okay, 1,000 it is. Ooh. Well, that's that's pretty big. Looking very interesting right now. Let me get these back up. Everything seems to fit as far as that's concerned. Oh, or maybe I'll get one up and one down. Just so I can see. Now, how about some battery power? I don't want to stuff it in the tank this time. Because I want to make it look interesting. That looks like it'll work. Let me retract this just to see that it fits. I don't think we need any more of this stuff. I guess it wouldn't be too bad to carry some science up, just in case. There's no point in an accelerometer. Uh, gravioli detector, just in case. It's possible. Ah, oh, these Clampatron seniors are bigger than I thought they were. Let's start small then. This is the standard docking port. And let's see how this might dock to... Well, maybe we should use a smaller docking port then. So... Don't worry, we're not uh, finished uh, configuring this yet. I'm just trying to see the docking situation. Obviously, we need to deal with the power power issue is big. Okay, and let's say we use a shielded docking port. Oh, I can't uh, test that right now, but it should be... Oh, well the shielded docking port will be the standard clamp clampatron. So we can't use that one, we need to use this. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there is a one meter one. Okay, so we'll have to remember to use the one meter one. And then we'll uh, hook this up to this. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Okay, that that's interesting. That's a start. Now, panels. Don't have too much choice with this stuff. What does this... The problem with panels is I can't see them deployed sometimes. And if I can't see it deployed, I don't want to mess with it. That's better. And I'm going to even go so far as to add these panels. But I want to be able to reach each of these containers. Life support container. Is that only oxygen? Hopefully everything else is in there, right? Should have food and all. Uh, where's my... Okay, let me just stick a crew on and see what it says. Okay, 161 days. Alright. Good deal. Right. Oh, that looks fine, doesn't it? Could look worse. Let's see how the Forsetti deals with it. Oh, this this has a decoupler. Oh, but it's the one at the top, right, right. Okay. Um, so I've got the rest of the uh, stages right. Now, this is the trick, because we... 
We can use this stage to get us to geostationary, and that's my plan. Uh, we're gonna get this geostate. This will be a geostationary. Well, not geostationary. Sorry, geosynchronous. Well, we could correct the inclination as well. But uh, yeah, so it's gonna be a pretty lofty station. Did I say low Earth orbit? I, I I'm reconsidering that right away. Uh, yeah. I think we need to... well, wait a minute. That's not quite right. Because if we want a station, it wouldn't be very good to put it into uh, geo uh, geosync or geostationary because the radiation is too bad, right? Because if we eventually want to keep Kerbals there for an extended stay and we've got the food... we've started to collect some of the food for that purpose, um, we don't really want to have it be the high radiation environment. So we do want to keep this low. So do we really not need all this fuel? Um, so this stage is going to burn short, I think. I think uh, we, we're going to keep stages a little bit shorter. And that will help us to not go overboard with this. Oh, I guess we can do without these boosters now. Yeah. Yeah, since we're making everything smaller, we can uh, go back to okay, okay, go go, um, go back to not having those boosters. This will be a three-minute stage. Yeah, it looks like we might not be able to dump as much as we thought, or I thought, because the surface thrust to weight ratio is not good enough. Okay, I guess we'll uh, slap those guys back on. I don't even think we need this stage, do we? Well, I mean, it was always meant to be a lunar transit stage anyway. Oh, maybe we should just... <sighs> yeah, let's just dump it. So, probably shouldn't call this the Forseti anymore. It's a very different thing we've got here. Alright, so let's sneak in some fuel and stuff into this. Say I configure it to MMHN204. Oh, no, go back there. Does it not have an option for that? Cylindrical service module. Uh, is, are they not properly connected? That's strange. I'm doing something wrong. Have I been away for from this for so long that I don't know how to do this? Uh, yeah, MHM two hundred four. What are the percentages on its usage of MMHN204? Why wasn't it already configured for it? Darn it. I thought I did. Um, it looks like about 50-50. Uh, not quite, but uh, close enough for my purposes. I'm gonna go here and add... Uh, which one was more? Um, MMH was more. So. I'm going to add 80 units of MMH and the remaining N204. Uh, 90 units, sorry. 90 units. Okay, that'll do. Should we also add some forward propulsion? That The reason I picked MMH N204 is so that we could potentially add these. Uh, we should move the solar panels up if we're going to, though. Okay, well, this will be pretty quick to get into orbit. Hmm, we can't really throttle that part. We'll just have to shut it off at the right time. Uh, maybe... Well, this one doesn't really restart, does it? Oh, maybe we should replace it then, huh? 
we could go back to stop 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 we could go back to the other rocket instead of using this one and it'll be oh now the thrust on this is quite robust 18 is way too much so shall we go back to the Dellinger style thing just with a wider body okay I think I've got it sorted out we've got a much stouter rocket but and not quite as efficient as I'd like but it should function properly and not as efficient as I'd like because okay, go go away um, you can see we're basically carrying up about 2% of our total weight so that's not quite great but the benefit is that we, we basically go back to the LR89 and that's our base stage we've got boosters we need them because without the boosters we barely have one we don't really have one unit of thrust to weight ratio uh, it does limit the um, g-forces so that's good and we'll have our second stage do just fine and then the payload will get into orbit so the numbers work out that's the important thing and it should be a much more gentle ride I think I've got everything I don't even know what to call this this is some sort of middle ground between the Dellinger and the Forseti I guess it's more of a Dellinger uh, a fat Dellinger very fat uh, okay so let's call this what should we call the station hmm well I guess we should go with another actually you know what I'm gonna go with a fantasy writer this time because I've been reading one of his books uh, as uh, you know for the past few days so I'm gonna call it Pratchett Station and we're going to uh, put it on I'm gonna call this the Dellinger Heavy uh, and it's not really heavier I think it's just fatter I guess it is somewhat heavier after all it needed the solid rocket boosters to get up so I think that's that's everything I hope that's everything it's been a while since I've I've got a lot of rocket things going on so I have to sort of remember everything and one other thing I need to do is action group the solar panels I think oh and the antenna would be good uh, let's let me get the antenna first okay so toggle that and then the solar panels okay that'll do right okay let's go hmm yes this is a very fat rocket look at that well we couldn't make it any thinner because of the payload uh, of course we could go with the bulky payload fairing but I don't really like those and well uh, <laughs> if we had things running we would be in budget though we don't have a mission for this uh, what we need to do is I actually want to see if we can minimize our inclination with respect to the moon that would be helpful I think but how can I eyeball this I don't know we'll be high we'll be north so we need to be where the moon is high as well and then decrease our inclination I hope so we're going from here and let's time up a little bit it'll also have the side benefit of putting us in the daylight now how far off do you suppose we are oh I guess I could uh, uh, let's let's use MechJeb for once I may not have res okay whatever um, what was it? Uh, it's been so long since I've used this uh, maneuver planner 
No. No, I, I, I want to. Uh, this is a target info. Da, da, da. Rendezvous planner, maybe. Ah, there we go. Moon. Okay. Relative inclination 38.38. Sounds like it's bad. Right. Okay, now I get it. Oh, okay. Should be getting close. Oh, maybe I'm doing it well. Oh, yes. Oh. It can't get too much less than that, can it? I mean, it shouldn't even be that much, right? I mean, the moon is 23.5 degrees. And we're 28.6. Let me just see. Hope I'm doing this right. Okay, let's just go now. That one degree will be fine by me. Let me keep this up for reference. We're not actually going to the moon. We're just uh, making sure that we have a minimum inclination with respect to the moon. And I'll make this a very good reference for missions to the moon, this station. Okay, SAS on, throttle, oop, yes, one of those, throttle up. Very busy scene here, FAR can go into its normal place. And... Off we go. Okay, losing a bit of steam, but I think we'll be all right. And where exactly do we want to go? Let's see. We certainly don't want to go just flat 90. We have to pay attention to where our inclination needs to be. This is a very strange launcher and a very strange launch. Do not, do not copy this. <laughs> it's, this is, I do not consider this my best piece of work here. So let's just make that clear right up front. This is not a very good launcher. Very much not. 
Okay. I think uh, we just need to go range safety here. Let's make sure it uh, gets dumped into the water there. Uh, we don't really have a self-destruct thing. Okay, I think I'm satisfied that this will crash clear of the KSC. I think looking right when I saw this on the launch pad, I realized that uh, this probably needs some redesigning. So we're going to go on that basis. It just doesn't have enough thrust at that point. What we need is bigger and more long-lasting boosters. Alright, so let's just go back to the VAB. Oh, I time morphed and I don't want to do that again. Alright, uh, let's, let's just watch it crash and then we'll go back to the VAB. There's still hope. <laughs> oh. Actually, the probe is still there. <laughs> okay, well, this might be just me being a little bit thick, but I'm I'm going the Kerbal way for once, and I'm just going with bigger boosters. And it's probably because I'm really tired right now, I'll confess, that uh, I might not be in the best frame of mind for this. But let, let's, let's do this. I have limited the thrust on these to 40% so that they last longer. Um, the best situation is the fact that uh, we don't have serious g-forces. I added the fins back because, well, clearly we had control problems, so let's just add the fins back. And let's try this one more time. Okay, let's not uh, waste any time, let's go. Also, I added more gimbling to this rocket, but I'm now reconsidering that. For some reason, SAS does not like fins. Let me take SAS off now. Okay. Maybe this is just a bad day for me and rockets. Okay.
Now I'm not trying to match inclinations with the moon, I'm just trying to minimize the inclination with the moon. So we'll add a, another booster section to totally correct the inclination, I think that would be a good idea. Okay, I think we're in a roughly stable situation. Let's see what's going on here. 0.9, not bad. Well, yeah, let's just keep this going. Okay, nice start. Uh oh. All right. Good. Now, can the furring separate properly without me accidentally losing my payload? Sort of. Let's extend the communicator. Yes, it's poking out now. Gonna have to shake off that cone eventually. I don't think any attempt to do so now will be very helpful. So I'll have to remember to put some sort of uh, little rockets on top, though that might be tricky because now we've got, uh, they'll probably just fall off. Doesn't quite work the way it used to. We do want this somewhat high. We can't have it too close to Earth. Otherwise, it'll have difficulty quite frequently communicating with things. Not with the KSC. It'll be in constant communication with the KSC because of our satellite network, but it might have difficulty with other missions. Well, while this is still going on, let me take a peek at our planetary situation here. I can't say that I see any easy transfers right now. We'll have to catch up with Duna, uh, not Duna, Mars. Um, the angle actually to transfer to Mars should be about the same as the angle between Kerbin and Duna. I think it's a 45 degree angle for uh, for home and transfer. I'll have to look that up though. How can... still says my relative inclination to the moon is less than a percent. Uh, not a percent, a degree. I have no idea how that is happening. That can't be right. I mean, the moon's inclination is more than 28.5 degrees. I think it's gonna mess with me right at the end. getting a bit high here. Could attempt to relight. We have the RCS after all. Okay, so what I'm going to do is shut off here. 700 kilometers is just fine. A little bit high for a station, but not bad. And we'll coast to Apoapsis for the first time in... Have we coasted to Apoapsis in this series at all? Communication is still holding out. How's our fuel flow? Very stable still. For some reason this one isn't... Conf oh, I, because I pulled it out from the from the parts menu. Well, while it's very stable, I want to burn here. Okay, not bad. And relative inclination to the moon, 0 0.6. According to that, which I still don't believe, because how is that possible? 
the inc our inclination is 28.75 degrees. Oh, but the moon isn't just 23.5, is it? I think the moon itself is inclined by 5 degrees, isn't it? Well, that's really convenient. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the Earth is tilted by 23.5 degrees, but the Moon itself has an inclination with respect to Earth's, uh, well, with respect to the ecliptic. And it happens to be 5 degrees. Turns out Cape Canaveral is not such a bad place after all. Okay. And I think uh, we're done with this stage. I'm not going to try and burn with it anymore. So let us... Uh, yeah, let's... Is this still a decoupler? Let me just uh, ignite both... Dec uh, let, let, let's just dump everything at once. Okay, should be... Okay. Excellent. Okay. Now, solar panels. Uh, did they not get action group properly? Okay, I guess I didn't ex get them action group properly. Or something. Okay, finally. Alright, so I think we're good to go on future interplanetary missions and also to extend this particular facility. We'll ha we have communications and some food. Uh, I want to add a fuel module to it and a docking module. So next time either I'm going to send the interplanetary probe up or a fuel and docking module to this and I think Consider, uh, I'll have to check where the home and transfers for each of the planets is. Whichever, I mean, practically speaking, I think uh, we should be aiming for either Venus or Mars. Uh, just for, because I don't think we've built anything that could get any further. But I'll have to check when the appropriate transfer windows for those would be for a home and transfer. I'm not going to look at that anymore. I'm not going to be. T I'll, I'll do the calculations by hand, or by computer. Okay, not a bad, not a bad looking little guy there. Not a bad start. So this will actually, you could sort of envision this as something that's really actually stuck to the main body of the station. The station will have its man facilities, and it just has this on one. Uh, sort of sticking out a little bit and then the huge solar arrays and everything but we need a lot more science to really get that going all right currently going over where are we Africa Uh, yep, Africa, and we happen to be communicating through GSTAT 2. Our orbital soup is very complicated right now. Uh, GSTAT 2 does not... Uh, is it a GSTAT probe? I mean, how is that GSTAT 2? We've got lots of GSTAT 2s. Okay, um, I'm not going to try and figure this out right now. My... Yeah. Even though I said I'm not going to clean stuff up, boy, does it need cleaning up. But it works. We've got communication and that's the important part. And now we can communicate with all sorts of stuff. Alright, so with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.